Today we're going to talk about becoming a versatile angler and I've got a two-part series coming up and this is going to be the first part of it and the second part is going to be how to fish pressured lakes and ponds but this becoming a versatile angler will also kind of lead into that category and topic so I wanted to talk about being versatile first and then talk about how to use that versatility in pressured waters. So we're going to start off with a definition of being a becoming a versatile angler and that's pretty much just being able to catch fish using multiple patterns, you know, regardless of the weather conditions, you know, taking different techniques on different days of the year and different seasons and being able to catch fish consistently no matter where you're at. Now, a lot of you guys may have been just like I was whenever I was growing up. I found a couple baits that worked and I swore by them. You know, one of them was a June bug worm. So no matter where I went, I always had it tied on. And if they weren't biting a June bug worm, I just assumed the fish weren't biting that day. I'd leave and come back another day. And it wasn't until I got into college and started fishing a bunch of different lakes that I realized how much I was missing out on because a lot of times they weren't biting that June bug worm but they were biting, you know, a crankbait on a reaction strike or something. So I'm going to give you some tips that will allow you to become more versatile. And these are the things that you need to think about while you're out on the water. And as you guys can see from my previous videos, I fish with everything now. I like to fish with rats, ducks, birds, you know, you name it. And I've probably fished with it or something very similar to it because I like to experiment with everything out there on the market to try to learn new techniques, new baits. And really it all boils down to what triggers a fish to bite. And that really just has always fascinated me. I like triggering that fish to bite and really regardless of whatever the lure is I feel like I've succeeded if I can get that fish to bite. So before we get into bait types and what you should be fishing with first you have to understand what triggers a fish to bite and it comes with experience because it changes throughout the year. In the spring a lot of times you're getting bit but it's not because the fish is necessarily hungry it's because they're guarding their bed and they're protecting their area and there's other times of the year when you get a reaction bite that it's just in a fish's nature as something with a specific profile swims by them they eat it it's just a reaction it's like a turkey goblin to a crow it's just something that is kind of triggered inside of them and it's important to try to understand that bite so try to piece that together once you catch a fish try to understand what triggered that fish to bite and that's going to help you become more versatile now one of the best tips i can give you for becoming more versatile is pick a day when the fish are biting good, like maybe a summertime day where you can fish a bunch of different water depths and bring your tackle box and try to go out and catch a fish on every different lure in your tackle box. So catch one fish, then retie, catch another fish, and so on. And that's kind of how I became more versatile. It's very hard, especially when the fish are biting good, for you to stop using a particular bait because most of the time we just want to catch as many as we can and once we've got them biting something, we know they're biting it. That's going to be one hard thing to do, but I guarantee you, if you get the fish biting, and just say they're biting a worm, and then you throw out a crankbait, and they're not really biting it, but then you, you know, you know the fish are there, you can play with your retrieve, you can do a stop and go, and then you may figure out how to fish a crankbait just through that scenario. You may figure out that the stop and go works better, or burning it by them works better, but once you have the fish in the area, and you know what depth they're holding at, and you know they're biting, that's the best time you could ever use to experiment with different lures. It'll teach you how to use that lure, as well as what the fish are actually doing, feeding, schooling up, you know, how they're eating. So that's a really good opportunity. So take that tackle box out there, fish with all the different types of lures, try to go from surface lures to mid-depth lures to deep diving, and that's going to be something that will really help you out. But again, pay attention as you're fishing them as to what is causing the bite and what the conditions are. So now let's talk a little bit more about seasons. So right now you probably couldn't just take your tackle box out there on the water. If your lakes aren't frozen over, it'd be tough to get a topwater bite right now. So let's, I'm going to give you some, kind of key you in on what to throw during each season and give you an idea of the baits and bait types to start off with. So in the spring, focus on shallow water baits, soft plastics, topwaters, square bills, and then try to figure out what that bite is, if it's the reaction bite or if it's the defense bite or if they actually are eating it because they're hungry. But either way, target that shallow water depth most of the time in the spring. And one thing I love about the summer is that it's wide open. You can target any depth, anything from top water lures to mid-range lures all the way to deep diving stuff like deep diving crankbaits. So in the summertime, that would be when you'd want to throw the whole tackle box at them and learn as much as you can. 
Now in the fall, you want to focus on shad style baits, lipless crankbaits, spooks, swim baits, Alabama rigs, anything that looks like a shad is what you're going to want to try to learn in the fall. And then once the winter comes around, you want to go with deep water baits and techniques like a drop shot, a deep diving crank, a spoon, an underspin, an Alabama rig, and pay attention to how cold it gets and how that affects the bass. If it gets really cold after a cold front, you're probably going to need to use those slower moving lures like drop shots. And then once it warms back up, you can go to the faster stuff like a deep diving crank. But the weather is a good topic. So as you're trying to become more versatile, try to take notes on everything that's happening around you. You know, start off with the weather. Is it sunny or is it overcast? And is there wind out? You know, what's the water temperature versus the air temperature? Are you starting on a warming trend or has it been a steady weather pattern or is it a cooling trend? And try to try to focus and retain as much information as you can. That way, say the next time you're out and you match those conditions, you got a lot of wind and some high current conditions, then you'll know, hey, you know, I can throw that spinner bait like I did and I'll be able to catch them because that's one big important factor is you may learn a specific technique on a body of water and if you if you really pay attention to all the factors that allowed you to catch that fish then you can reproduce that pattern on a completely different body of water because a largemouth bass is pretty much the same they're going to stick to their habits you know throughout anywhere you go in the country and they're going to act very similar so you can use these patterns and this versatility at different bodies of water so pay attention to the weather also pay attention to the current, pay attention to the surface activity, you know, not just bait fish, but like is it slick or is it choppy if you're fishing top water. Um, if there's schooling activity going on, that's going to be something you want to key in. And last is just your, is there bait present in the area? And the number one thing you need to know about the body of water you're fishing in is what type of forage do the fish feed on because that's really what you're going to try to mimic if it's bluegills or threadfin shad or gizzard shad or whatever it may be you're going to try to mimic that so it's important to learn that up front and then that will also help you become more versatile and then using those different baits in that category to mimic that style of forage so that's a lot of information for you to digest but just try to take that into consideration the next time you're out there especially you know when things start warming up here in 2017 you get on a good bite that's when you really want to try to use some of these things i mentioned today and swap out your lures and try to make them bite because i can promise you that there's nothing more exciting than using something like a duck lure or or a topwater lure that you haven't used in years and once you get that fish to commit to it and bite it you learn so much more and it's also fun you know you can use different techniques and fishing doesn't get boring you're not just out there worm fishing all the time you know you can learn these new techniques and then it will help you add more weapons in your arsenal so everywhere you go fishing you can just match what conditions are there at that present time with things that you've learned from your history and hopefully it will allow you to catch some more bass. So I'm going to end today's topic right there. And then the second part of this and one of my next videos is going to be how to fish pressured lakes and ponds. And that's something that we can all relate to because we all have pressured waters no matter where you live in this country. But I've got several tips that I can give you on that on how to still get out there and catch fish in those heavily pressured waters and tips that I use. And a lot of you may not think that I fish pressured waters, but some of them are heavily pressured and I've figured out some good tips on how to still catch those big bass even though there's a lot of pressure on them. So stay tuned for that one. And as always, good luck fishing folks.